tall, gangly thing? Hello and welcome. Today I'm joined by one of the three North American World's representatives going to be playing at the TFT World Championships in just about a week and a half. It's Spencer. Spencer, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, uh, yeah. thanks for having me here. So for anyone who may not be super familiar with who you are, why don't we just go ahead first and why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, so I guess like uh, um, I've been playing like TFT since launch and I've like reached uh, Challenger every set. And I guess I wasn't really like well known in the TFT community and like set one and two, but in set three when I uh, started to get into Twitch, I became well known within the community and proved proved to myself and others I was like a consistent top ten player. And yeah, I guess here I am now, like still enjoying TFT. And yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, I was going to ask you about like kind of your journey to get to where you are now. It sounds like that's you know kind of gave me the short version, but I'd love to kind of hear you. Uh, kind of dig a little deeper into, especially I would say like set four, set five, kind of when your name propped up from this player who's really good on the ladder to suddenly this this tournament threat. I mean, what was that journey like going from just being really good at the game to becoming, you know, one of the best players in North America? Um, like it was a lot of, um, I guess like, like, uh, I guess talking with like other top players, like, um, like just theory crafting and like just like discord calling and like sh- like just um i guess like helping shove out and stuff so yeah do you have like a group of players that you theory craft with pretty often yeah usually like burrosaurus like setsuko like and like goobums usually now uh for anyone who isn't familiar with this spencer is the best placing tournament player in north america had the 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 best average placing among all the tournaments you competed in what is it that actually makes you such a tournament threat uh i I guess i um i think what makes me strong as like a tournament player is like i guess um i'm comfortable playing with like many different comps from many different spots in the game that other like top players aren't like as uh comfortable with like open fort or like from like playing behind like i feel like other top players are like too un- like too comfortable or their like main style is like playing win streak i think the reason why is because like of ladder like in tournament like every person is a top player and know how to like assemble an actual like strong board but on a ladder there aren't as like many games where you get like more than like three top players in your lobby so like um so it's like it's, like super easy to like win streak in, on in ladder compared to like tony like on ladder, there's usually like two or three players playing like for fun, or they don't really like like they're like experimenting and stuff, or like they're not really know what they're doing. Uh, so when it comes like time for Tony to, for those win streak players, they don't like, and when they don't end up win streaking, they're like put in spots where they're like uncomfortable playing. No, that makes sense. You know, when when people watch you play in tournaments, especially I've heard a lot of commentators say this about you, is that you have this um, reputation of being a first or eighth player. Do you agree with that sentiment? Uh, actually, like, hard to disagree with that statement, actually. Uh, honestly, I'm not even, like, really sure where that fr- phrase came from. Like, uh, I'm just, like, looking at all my, like, past 20 results. I actually do, like, really well and, like, show consistent results. Like, even at set four, like... I think in set four, I was like, I was either like second or third most Tony points after Soju, uh, and like those qualifier, like uh, like those like four qualifier tournaments. Mm-hmm. I think it was like between me and Sox are like like second and third or something. Uh, yeah, I think maybe yeah, I... Where, where, I think maybe where the phrase came from was like during set four regionals. I think I like ended up like laureling plus having like a very bad mental on day three. Ended up like going eighth a couple times. But even then, I like almost like made it to day two, and I think I lost by like one point. So yeah, yeah. I mean, even if that is a reputation that you've had, I will say that your performance in set five has done the work to get you away from that reputation. Obviously, you can be a first or eighth player all you want, but if you have the rep- if you have the consistency to be placing top four as often as you do, I, I think it's a pretty unfair title. So I, I would agree with you in that sense, actually. Uh, now let's let's talk about regionals. Regionals was quite a ride. We had Robin's historic performance going, what was it, one 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 five one one something crazy like that. Probably never going to see it again. But on the other side of that, came down to that final game between you, Soju, Setsuko, Pakigam, all vying for that third seed. You were the one that came out on top. What I would love to do is actually have you walk me through 
what it was like in those final moments leading into that final game to that final fight where you won the tiebreaker against Pocky. I mean, what were, what were you thinking at the time? <laughs> it like honestly felt like so surreal. Like the way I got into Worlds was like, like <laughs> it was just it was actually so insane because like yeah, you mentioned like like there was like five contenders for top three and one off like the tiebreaker and like honestly that last game was like it was just like. It was it was actually so insane with the five draconic egg. I I think I remember the game exactly. It was like, um, I was like in the early game. Uh, I think I was like, um, I was like, like laureling a little bit. So then I had like I had a like weak born, and I was just like I had to like play for something like crazy or something. So I, I had to like play for draconic. So then on three five, I, I there was like this Galio like a Galio on carousel. I, like, I took it, lo- leveled next turn, and then hit 5 Draconic, and I just, like, the, ne- the, the, the next turn after, it was just, like, this 5 Draconic egg. <laughs> I was just, like, I was actually, like, oh, blessed my by Morthog or something. And then, f- from there, I knew I had to, like, survive until ter- in- until until it hatch. So I just, like, ro- like um, just um, rolled on 7, became, like, try to save as much HP as possible. And then on Carousel, there's also the Garen, which saved me, and then the double Nico like warmogs titan scaring or something it was like it's like man like warthog was actually like like blessing me with that last game yeah i mean i will say in terms of tournament moments there's probably i mean that that tournament had two of the most crazy insane moments i think we'll ever see which was the five turn draconic coming in that final game where you need to clutch it out and like i said before robin's insane performance two things that may never happen i mean obviously with draconic not being in the game anymore that's you know, it's definitely not going to happen, but it's wild to see just how insane that tournament actually ended. Now, with with that uh, third place finish, you qualified for World alongside Delicious Milk and Robin Songs. Now, you guys have a couple weeks left, week and a half left before Worlds. How are you guys practicing? Is there like some sort of North American training session that you guys are all doing together? Yeah, we're uh, we're actually like planning to set up some in houses after the big patch tomorrow. We're we're plan- we're also like apparently like we're planning to put some like money on the line to like uh. and uh, and helps us to actually like give incentive for all the players to like try and uh, I think we're also like getting the other qualified players to like join in and participate so it should be like really good practice. So I know you were talking about before earlier. You said how you spent a lot of time theory crafting with your group of friends. Does that is that same thing happening between like you, Milk, and Robin, or are you still kind of practicing the way you've always practiced in the past? Uh, yeah, I, I've still um, I'm um pr- like just same as like the past. Um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll probably like like probably next week. I'll probably like just talk with Robin and Milk about stuff. You know, I, I did want to ask this, and this is something we, we didn't talk about before, but, you know, typically in TFT, it's a free-for-all game. You know, there's duo tournaments, there's things like that, but when you're going into Worlds, you're playing with Robin and Milk, even though you guys aren't competing together, there is, you know, all three of you are representing North America. Do you feel some sort of sense of camaraderie with like the three of you of all of us trying to represent NA, put NA back on the map, you know, best best region in the world? Is there some sort of sense of camaraderie with the other players or n- no? Uh, um, I guess kind of. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I really, I, I honestly, I just really would just wish NA, like, like, uh, like hopefully, like NA will show like really, uh, like do really well and like, like, like just prove that, uh, so that we can like prove NA like this is like the strongest region or like a very strong like region. Yeah. I mean, going into worlds, what what are your expectations? How do you feel you're gonna do? How do you think NA is gonna stand up against everyone else? Um, like I I expect NA to do very well because like I think in this world we have like the strongest like probably uh yeah probably the strongest like lineup I think. And just like NA is like like setting up very strong contenders, and like I think we actually like have a shot at winning worlds, or yeah. I don't know how much of the other regions you've actually watched, but are there any other players from other regions that you're excited or maybe even a ner- a little nervous to play against? I think I think I'm like um, I'm most nervous and like kind of most excited to play against like the Chinese players. The reason why is because I've like rarely played against them on ladder and like. Cause like a lot of the a lot of the other regions like they usually come over to NA and like um, just like boot camp in NA, but rarely ever China I think. So and I also heard like they have like a very like 
unique play style, and it'll be like, um, and I and it'll be really interesting, like how how the um how we would like, um, or like how how we do against them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the in the set four worlds, obviously there was a lot of hype on China going into the event. People talked about how greedy they played. They didn't play as fast as NA, U, Korea, and then they they ended up bombing out of Worlds. Unfortunately, none of the their players actually made top eight. But I have been watching the the regionals for for China. It seems like, I, I mean, I saw some very aggressive play when in in uh, Robin Song's regional watch party today. It actually, I would actually say maybe some aggressive plays that. North American players wouldn't even do themselves. So uh, it does seem like like China's coming back with a different play style. Depends on who the representatives are. Uh, so I know you said you guys are boot camping, potentially doing the in houses with any of the other with some of the other regional players. Are you are you familiar with any of them, like on a personal level, or have you played against some of the other uh, regional representatives in ladder before? I think I've uh, played against a few of the EU players um on ladder because they actually like came over i think this week or like last week but i don't I, um i haven't really played against like kr players i think okay. the latin america or La- La- latin players came over as well but i don't think i've versed them on ladder yet when, when you're going into an event like this is this something where you're actually concerned about how the other players play, or is there some sort of scouting report on, oh, th- these are the players that may be in my lobby. I know that this person starts bow. I know this this start, person starts uh, sword. Or do you really just want to play your own game? No, uh, I definitely do, like, on, like, tour- tournaments that I really, like, actually, like, care for. Uh, I-, I actually do, like, a lot of, like, scouting and, like, mm. looking at what items are they-, they go for and, like, try not to overlap, like, comps and stuff or, like, play comps that actually, like, counter, uh, counter uh, their comp. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that something you've done like either at regionals or other NA tournaments in the past? Yeah, actually at regionals, I pl- my plan was actually to... Um, like, I-, I actually never ended up like getting the opener for it, but my plan was to play like Zara, Zara 3, Nunu 3, because uh, the meta at the time was to was actually like Lucian, right? Uh, or like like Night meta. So, I, like, and Nunu 3 actually like counters Galio 3, and then usually Zara counters... Lucian because of how her targeting works and Lucian targeting works. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we'll see some sort of tournament meta develop by the end of the tournament. And that's one of the, th- the things about these multiple day tournaments is as you get more familiar with the players, you, you know, get to see how they perform, get to see what they prefer and then make adaptations based off of that. Uh, with, you know, all that said about worlds, We've got that coming up in a week and a half, but a little bit after that, we've got set six. I don't know how much of the preview you actually got to see, but I am curious to know if you have any thoughts on set six, and is there anything you're looking forward to most about it? Oh, I'm definitely super excited to play the new set. It, like, it seems like very similar to set three Galaxy, and 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 set three was like honestly my favorite set, and and I'm also like super excited for dual mode. Like, I can't wait for all the like the new like. Um, new strategies that uh, that can be discovered in Duomo, and and I can't wait to play uh, play and work together with my friends. I I know uh, you know obviously it'll be a slightly different rule set than the Giant Slayer series, but you competed in that. You did quite well in the Giant Slayer series, second best performer I believe on an, on an individual level. Um, but I do want to know how do you actually view the two v two format versus the standard you know, free for all. Do you think it's actually a, a competitively viable format? Yeah, I, I definitely think dual mode has a lot of potential because um, like, let's say in, in uh, free for all, like if you get one low roll game, like it, it's very hard to like come back. But in dual mode, you always have like that, um, your, your, your partner to like, maybe you can like, um, like just try to be, uh, like get like, like scavenge uh, uh, like a seventh or a sixth and then allow your our partners to get like a first or something, or like it'll always have like a comeback uh, with their partner. 
Yeah, I forget who it was. It might have been Jirachi who talked about in one of their interviews how they were actually doing the math for their partner to like help them build their board because they knew their game was so doomed that there was no way they were top fouring. So it is pretty cool that you actually get to backseat together. You get to figure it out. You get to do your craft mid-game and actually come up with a strategy that works in that specific context. So we'll, we'll have to see exactly how the how the format develops. But Spencer, that's, that's actually everything I have for you. So thank you so much for, for coming on and and sitting down with me uh before we go is there anything you'd like to shout out uh i guess shout out to like um like goobums and bert like specifically because like without 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 them like oh uh, I, I definitely want to have like made two worlds like they they honestly have taught me like the most um or, or, like yeah the t- taught me the most in like tft like they coached me uh, a lot and uh they taught me like a lot of new tags and i guess uh shout out to like let's go and and Sarah Lynn, because like they're also like and like my other TFT friends, like without them, like I, I probably still I, I, I probably wouldn't have like like continue like playing TFT without all, all, like this TFT community or like the, the friends I made along the way. So yeah, I feel like that's a story I, I keep hearing time and time again about people in TFT that this really is like a special community where people can can make friends and you know start to meet new people. And it's and it's a really, really cool thing. It's something I love about the community. But with that said, Spencer, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a blast getting to talk to you. And for everyone watching this interview, thank you guys for watching all the way through. For more TFT coverage and content, make sure you guys like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. 